here with an episode of The Holidays Are Coming, and it is Sunday. It is, in fact, the Sunday before Thanksgiving 2010. And um, this year will be the very first year in my entire life that I'm not going to cook Thanksgiving dinner because our family has plans to go out of town. So we'll be dining out for Thanksgiving for the first time ever. I have to tell you that I'm looking forward to our planned weekend because Friday is my birthday and it's my mother's birthday as well. And then Sunday of next, next Sunday, the 28th, is my daughter Molly's birthday. So we planned a weekend to go away and have a little bit of fun. But there's a little gnawing part inside me that doesn't feel right about not cooking Thanksgiving dinner. So in an attempt to alleviate that gnawing in my heart, I decided that I was gonna cook a turkey today. And I, because I didn't do a turkey last year, and because Rick said that I should show you how I cook a turkey, I'm going to do that today. So, without further ado, let's see what I do to make my turkey. Here is, this is um, an organic, fresh turkey that I bought at my local grocer. Uh, it was very expensive. It is 12 and a half pounds. And uh, usually when I make a turkey, I make a very large turkey. I usually don't cook a turkey that's under 22 pounds. But because it's just for us, and then I'll have a carcass to make some soup, and we'll have some leftovers, this is what we're going to go with today. Um, additionally, what we're going to use in the turkey, some celery, some garlic I've just cut the tops off of, onion, I didn't even peel it some baby carrots that I had in the drawer. If you have whole carrots, go for it. These need to be used and we're not gonna really eat them. We're just gonna use them to perfume a turkey. I have a, an orange that's quartered and I have two apples over here and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. I have some butter and I just went outside in the garden. I washed these off. I've got some sage, some thyme, some rosemary and some bay leaf and they've been freshly cut and I just washed them. So we're gonna use those go with a basic roast on this bird today. Um, the other thing is, never trust these. Don't ever trust these. I pull them out, they're ridiculous. I like to wash my turkey very well. My sink, my sink is clean. I have previously washed my sink. I like to give the turkey a bath in cold water. Pull out the neck and place it in a pot that I have waiting off to the side where I have chopped up, roughly chopped up, about four stalks of celery, including the leaves, a handful of those baby carrots, and an onion that I quartered. I didn't even peel it, and I am additionally going to throw a head of garlic in there. Here, I'll just do that right now. And we'll fill it with water. And I'm also gonna put some seasonings in here in just a little while. This is gonna simmer on top of the stove while your turkey is roasting. Um, I have a weird stove. I have one back burner that the oven vents out of. It gets hot enough that this will actually boil. So I'm just going to set this on that burner and um, through the afternoon as the turkey is roasting, this will actually make the stock that we're going to make our gravy from. So I'm just going to put that over there. And let's see, there is, this I think is the chicken heart. Or it's a giblets. It's some part. I'm gonna throw that in there too. And just put your hand in there, clean it out real good. Make sure you get this side too, this flap of skin. And here you will find a packet of giblets. And I'm gonna throw that into our stock mixture as well. Some of you may choose not to eat these, and that is perfectly acceptable. Um, my scissors aren't working as well as I want them to, but, well, let's see, I can just tear into that. If you wanna eat these, go right ahead. They'll be nice to flavor the stock with. Yeah, see, there's a liver and a heart there. The others was the giblets. And I'm probably not gonna put the liver in there because that'll give it a little bit of an acrid taste. I'm going to set that aside, though. My dogs might like it. All right. Let me throw this in the garbage can. And let's take our clean turkey. I'm 
and we're going to move it off to the side here. I'm going to bring it over. So let me move this stuff out of the way. All right. The first thing I'm going to do, take your chicken, I mean your chicken, your turkey wing, and we're going to put it underneath its little bottom. Tuck it under. This is going to make sure that they don't burn. And it's going to give your turkey a nice, even, it's going to, it's going to cook it more evenly because those aren't like slapping out there. And this one is tough. Just tuck them under just like that so they're close to the body of the turkey. A lot of times the larger commercial turkeys will come with a, a plastic like a six-pack handle with, around the legs of the turkey. This does not. This is actually prepared as I would do it. I would normally take my legs out of that plastic bit because I don't want to cook my turkey with the plastic. And I would, you see how they've kind of entrapped the legs of the turkey inside its own skin off of the thigh. Um, and that's how I would do it. And as it roasts, it's going to get nice and tight there. So, let's see. Let's begin. I have an apple here. And I'm going to poke this apple with a fork. Micah always thinks this is funny. It's not funny. This part here, this is where the turkey's neck was. If you s just put your apple up in there, and it's going to roast nicely. And it's going, by poking the holes in the apple, it's going to perfume the, uh, the turkey with that apple flavor. Now all you're going to do is you're going to take these aromatics that we chopped up earlier, the celery and the onion, and you're going to stuff it inside your bird. The best that you can is we're going to, we're going to go under here. If you put your finger right under the skin on the breast, and loosen it right underneath from the skin. And try not to tear it like I just did. It'll be fine. And on the larger birds, this is easier. I, uh, to be quite honest with you, I've never cooked a small turkey in my life. I've only ever cooked these massive 22 to 24 pound birds. So, let's see. Uh, get your fingers in that butter and under the skin here. Let me grab some more butter. And be liberal with the butter. The other thing I am going to tell you, I have my oven preheated to 450 degrees. We are not going to roast the turkey in its entirety at 450 degrees. We're going to roast it for 15 minutes at 450 degrees. We're going to set our timer, at which point we're going to turn it down to 350 degrees. And make sure you get these wings. Don't forget the wings with the butter. And get all parts of your turkey. and press the butter inside the breast there so that it gets down to the places where you couldn't reach with your fingers. Okay, now, let me rinse my hands off. Now, seeing is how I have stuffed the cavity very well, I might add, with um, all those good aromatics. So I'm going to attempt to shove some more in there. There's some time. And you know what? This doesn't have to be pretty. You just need to get it in there. Here's some rosemary. And I'm just kind of breaking it in half. Trust me, you will actually be able to smell it. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to perfume the meat. It's going to flavor the meat. And I don't like these bits up on top. 
and sage. What is Thanksgiving without sage? Just shove it in there. And you're not going to present this bird whole. I never present the bird whole. I know that, you know, that's a very Norman Rockwell-esque thing to want to do because it's, it's exciting. But you know what? Carving at the table, I don't recommend at all. Now, this is just my little deal. I'm going to pick some of these sage leaves and you'll see what I'm going to do with them. Okay. Let me turn, turn it here. If you put them under the skin like that. Now when you pull this out of the oven the skin will have cooked and these will be visible and it's going to be beautiful. And there's a very simple thing to do, but it's also very impressive because if you haven't ever done it before, people will think uh, you're the bee's knees. Just kind of flatten it out there. And if they get folded over, don't worry. This isn't rocket science. Food should not be frightening and it should not be intimidating. Food, we prepare food for sustenance and it is, in my opinion, one of the ultimate expressions of your love for your family. And what better time to keep it as simple as possible and not be afraid. If you've never cooked a turkey before, please do not be afraid of this. It's ridiculous to fear a turkey. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I know it sounds silly. I'm just going to pull this up for a second all these herbs that I have left I'm gonna stick underneath here and then I'm gonna put it down put the rack back on top and you can do that before you start I just didn't think to do it so I'm wiping up here then I'm gonna take about a cup of water or two Depending. I'm going to throw a third cup in there. Okay. Now, the only thing left to do is salt and pepper our bird. Lots of pepper. You can put some poultry seasoning in here. I'm not going to do that today because we have all this great fresh herb. So it would be kind of redundant to do that. But if all you have is poultry seasoning, toss, you know, season liberally inside the cavity before you stuff it with all those good aromatics. And then sprinkle it on the outside along with the salt and pepper. Okay. Again, my oven is at 450 degrees. We have our beginnings of our stock over here. They're going to start simmering away and smell delicious. Let's put this in here. If you have a very large turkey, you will need to remove one of the racks from your oven. And there it goes. And now I'm sweating. All right. In a half an hour, we are going to come back and turn our oven to 350 degrees. And I will bring you in here when I do that, just to help you be reminded. So I'll be back in half an hour.